hello class uh, welcome to our appreciation and now we move to the next lesson this is our lecture for the third week of october we're done with the with the elements of the different fields of art now we're going to talk about the principles guiding all of these elements to come up with a beautiful art piece so under painting the principles of art representing the artist uses the elements of art to create an effect to help convey the artist's intent so basically the the principle that's guiding a painting is as a balance and there are three types of balance when you say balance we have the symmetrical asymmetrical and radial balance when you watch uh, when you have seen all of those uh, paintings that you have known into your life you could easily see that the the balance when you try to compare the right side of the painting and the left side of the painting like for example in a portrait of a woman you try to look at the right side of the face and to the left compared to the left side of the face now we uh, you can say it's symmetrical balance uh, the painting is symmetrical when there's equal proportion of the right a uh, staff at the right part of the canvas or the face of the woman compared to the left side it is asymmetrical when there's no balance like it's distorted most of this uh, asymmetrical balance in a painting is found on distorted paintings or distortion where in the right part of the face of a woman for example in a portrait is not equivalent to the left part of the face so it could be that it's uh the eyes from of the uh, the right side is bigger and the one is smaller and usually the um, the paintings or the art piece having this asymmetrical balance are found in like um movies like thrilling movies or uh, even a ghost could also have asymmetrical balance when it comes to the its uh, visual aspect now uh symmetrical asymmetrical and then we have the radial balance when you say radial balance from the word radius so basically we could imagine that it is a cell like it's circular so the very good example for the radial balance is is with that uh which is uh, man the mandala the mandala if you are familiar with mandala you could easily see that uh, there's always a circular motion in the art piece so you try to check on that in the, in the internet now we move to sculpture so again we are also done with the elements of sculpture and now we're focusing on the principles guiding this animal to come up with a very good sculpture so we talk about under the the principles of sculpture we have number one is the orientation orientation is the arrangement of the sculpture in a space this includes the direction of the sculpture relative to the ground and its placement in the environment so it has something to do with the with the direction of the sculpture or the masterpiece it could point to the north it could point to the south it could point to either direction is up or downward okay so those are the orientations in relation to where the art piece is or the base of the art piece now we have the proportion. Proportion is uh, refers to the relative size of a whole. We often think of proportions in terms of size of relationship with the human body. So when we say proportion in human body in a sculpture, like when they make the the monuments or um, yeah monuments, uh, most probably, then you have to make sure that the volume, the size, and the shape of the head are propor is proportioned to the body. And make sure that the hands, the length of the length, the hands, are also proportioned to the length of the body, and the legs, of course, is also counted because it's the human body as a whole. And now we move to scale. Scale refers to the size of an object. Okay, so it's the volume of the object. In the art, the size of a relationship between the object and the human body is significant. In experiencing the scale of an artwork, we tend to compare its size. To the size of our own body. So apart from the scale, we also have articulation. Articulation is the mixing of all the elements joined together and how the art is being projected. 
so it touches the, the, the heart of the audience. So uh, the different parts of the body merge in a single form. So basically, articulation emphasizes the unity among the different elements or principles uh, governing or composed in your sculpture. And then we have the balance. Balance refers to the elements of art. So these are the line, the shape, color, value, space, and texture. It relates to each other. How this, this lines, color, shapes, and space relate to each other to create a very good equilibrium in the masterpiece. So that is one side doesn't seem to be heavier than the other. Okay, so that is has to be the balance of the sculpture. Now we move to the principles guiding the architecture or architectural um, pieces. There are three basic principles of a good architecture. The first one is the firmness, or what we call the durability. The durability is very important because it should stand up, obviously remain in, and it should remain in a very good condition. We have defined architecture as uh, a structure, and it has to. Um, be in good uh, condition. Why? Because the, uh, an example of architecture is the home, the condominiums, the buildings, the schools, the malls people go into. So basically, it has to be durable. Otherwise, it will break down and will cause uh, an emergency. Okay, it will cause uh, people's death or something. And then we have the utility or utilitas. Utility is the function of the architecture and the space where it is located. And we have to make sure when we make a, an architecture, it should be useful to the people, because that was one of the purpose of make, creating or making home, your houses, making your buildings, and making your malls, and of course the schools. So it should serve its function to serve the people. And then we have the beauty. We will never forget the beauty because this is all about art. And in architecture, there should also be beauty. Like, uh, for example, in, in a mall, when you create a mall or when you make structure a mall, mall, you should also consider the beauty that could attract the people in getting into the mall. It should delight people and raise the spirit of the people so that they would enter into more. Uh, structure or architecture. And then we have the literature. In literature, there are a lot of, uh, we have discussed a lot of devices or tools. We have a lot of, uh, like the, the figure of speech. All of these things are composed of the elements of literature. Now, I am about to read to you a very comprehensive line because if we're going to, to point out all of these elements to come up with the basic principle of literature. I have found this one uh, coming from a, a popular author. I will state the name of the author later on, but I want to read this one because it, it gives a very comprehensive principle governing literature. He says that a literature is coextensive with thought and with science, ranging as it does through every form of being, from the inmost depth of consciousness and the soul to the farthest and highest point outside of it, which is God, the author of all being. It differs from thought not only in the form, being its outward expression and as it were its garment, but also because the thought it adds feeling. It differs from science because it seeks to realize not only the truth, but likewise as the beauty. See, the beauty is always there. And he also says that the literature is the expression of man's affection as acting upon his relations with the material world, society, and his creator. That expression being as varied as the moods that pass over his soul, whether they speak of love, hatred, of joy, and sorrow or of fear and hope coming from brother Asayas. so um, if you try to go back to this video clip and try to internalize that comprehensive print uh, comprehensive principles of learning literature then you could we would understand more so i want you to go back to this video from time to time and try to 
uh, analyze and internalize the meaning of the principle of guiding and a literature. Now we move to music and dance. We can separate these two things together. Music can go alone, but dance cannot go without music. Dance music, dance needs music to set the mood, drop the beat, and create the motivation needed to start moving. Music has the ability to make us feel a certain or a particular way, which is why it plays such an immense role in dance. So when we had a lot of music already, it gives the body a bit and it gives the body the energy like wanted to dance. Different styles of dance, uh, of music create different types of beat and it comes, it's coming up with different uh, styles of dance too. So one technique is the Graham technique, which is a relative to modern dance. And it is based on the opposition between contraction and release. Contraction and release. A concept based on a bidding of cycle, which has become a trademark for modern dance. And uh, its other dominant principle, this modern dance other dominant principle is the spiraling. So spiraling is very basic in dancing because it is your... Your, uh, your torso is trying to move uh, in a circular manner around your spinal. So if you try to, to demonstrate by yourself, you could imagine what dancing is. It starts from there. So your spinal is moving around and you could feel the weight on the, your torso is trying to move around and you can feel the weight at the lower part of your spinal. So that starts the dance coming out from your, your immense love of music. And then we have drama and theater. So we have different, um, we discussed also already the different elements uh, found in drama and theater. And now we're going to discuss the principles guiding this one by involving the, uh, the different important aspects like the director, the role of the director, the, ro the role of the people involved in creating drama and theater. So we have the director, and then we have the stage manager, who is the assistant of the director. Of course, the director decides for everything. He is the decision maker in drama and theater. And then we have his assistant, the stage manager, the one who monitors and assists the director. And then we have the prompter. The prompters are the, the one documenting everything. The one also, of course, an assistant to the director. And they document all things, and they also present the rehearsals too the director and stage manager. And the one important guiding principle under drama and theater, we have the staging. The staging prioritizes the audience. So it focuses on the time and space, the sets, the tone of the scene. So uh, it also emphasizes on blocking so that the audience would not be moving from one place to another just to watch everything with regards to the, to the drama or play. So that's called staging. And then, of course, we have the performing. The performing also, of course, uh, as the word implies, it is very much related to the characterization and acting. So the voice and focus and focus of the characters are under this uh, principle. They are eye contact, eye to eye contact, their projection and fiction, their pacing when they try to do their part or deliver their part, the whole ensemble, and the blocking is also there. So that's the performing. And then we also have to consider the, the roles of the crew. The roles of the crew are very important because they are, they are in charge of the props needed on stage. They are in charge of the changing of the scene on stage. So there should be a procession. And also they are responsible for the costumes and makeup. So there should be like, they have to consider the measurement, they find to, uh, they have to find costumes that would fit into that stage. They have to check the makeups of these uh, actors and actresses on stage. They have to check on the efficiency of everything so that it could fit into the play and it could at least um, make the audience appreciate what's on stage. And apart from this costume and makeup, they also have the lighting. Lighting is also very more important in the drama or theater because it gives, the back, it gives you the whole view of the background. And it tells when that the whole scene is balanced or not balanced, and it sets the tone, the colors, it sets the 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 appearance of the whole scene. 
So apart from lighting, we also have the sound effect. The sound effect is also very as important as the other principles guiding the making of theater and drama because it provides also, it gives enhancement to the background and it gives, of course, uh, it provides the audience with something they cannot see. So the sound effects will make them visualize more what's the drama all about. They, they could figure out what's the, the onstage play all about. And then, of course, there's the rehearsal. The rehearsal is uh, guided by the, um, by the crews, of course. It is uh, led by the director and guided by the crew who makes almost everything on stage. So when they do rehearsals, they have to come up with some warm-ups. You do some warm-ups. And then you, you talk about the movements of the subjects in the on stage, uh, on stage. And the blocking is the principles of blocking again there. And the full performance of a chorus. So basically, those are the principles of uh, theater and drama. And we move to the principles of film and cinema. Now, I want to make a point that uh, you don't forget that the film and cinema are very much similar to the principles of drama and theater why the only difference is that uh, the main difference between theater and drama film and cinema is that the cinema is the theater involves life. a theater and cinema is that theater involves live performance like uh, plays on stage plays opera ballet and musical theater while cinema involves film so you have to have the structure like you, when you go to when you wanted to watch the movie, then you have to go to, go to SM Cinema to watch the film, okay? But if you wanted to, if you wanted to, go, uh, to go and watch some opera, then you have to go to CCP and other theatrical on uh, stage to watch all of those theater and drama. So that's the only difference between theater and drama, between theater and drama and film and cinema. Okay, so with that ends up our lecture on the principles of the different fields of art. I wanted to stay tuned with the, I'm sending you the link after this. And in my link, I am also sending the link with a PowerPoint presentation because I will be manifesting our, your, your activities and your assignment for this particular lecture. Happy, happy day, my dear students. I hope you enjoy the lecture. Have a nice day. God bless everyone. I love you all.